is Friday, TGIF, and we are getting set here. Sorry, we're a few minutes late on, on setup mode here. Need to make sure I have everything going. All right, I think you're set there. I know. Okay, and now I'm going to go over here and make sure I'm all logged in. All right, how do I? Hi. Now it's doctor. Okay. All right, let me see here. Free motion. Friday night event. That is us. Okay, boy. All right, Lisa Meadows here. I see her present. Hello. All right. Um, oopsie daisy. Me too. Oh, goodness gracious. What did I do? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're almost ready. I promise. Odie, I have to talk to you, but we're, we won't talk here. We'll, we'll discuss the bed cushions. Um, la 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 la, YouTube. I am hanging tough tonight here. Hold on. Hi, Linda from Texas. All right, I need my YouTube studio. Oh, it is Friday, ladies and gentlemen. We have made it through another week. Ah, Lisa Meadows is sharp. Can't put anything past her. I do not have a featherweight tonight. Um, hold on, live. If you are new, like this is the first time you're joining me, please say hello so I can introduce myself to you. Uh, okay, I see, I see YouTube now, so if you are on, say hi. All right. <laughs> Everybody says hi, Reagan. Hi, Sue Marshall. Oh, and Kathleen's on. Let's see if I can. I'm trying something new here. Oh, oh, nope, that doesn't work, Andy. Dang it, I was hoping. Hi, Cindy Hinkle. Cindy and Jen. Jen, are you watching? All right, I was hoping that I could make my font bigger on my laptop because my laptop's kind of far, and apparently I cannot. So I'm going to be doing this. Unless... <laughs> oh, oh, Bonnie Pelton says, hello from freezing Illinois. Hello, Michelle. Masha, is it Michelle? Michelle from Grand Lake Grove, Oklahoma. Thanks for joining us tonight. That's okay, Jen Jen. I'll forgive you. She was late. She said over to the Instagram show. Hi, Debbie from Kentucky. Okay, so just so everybody knows what I'm doing. Hi, Becky. Becky says hi to Ray. Uh, so this is my Friday night sip and so. Uh, literally, this show is all about finding our happy place. We grab a beverage of choice. For me, tonight it is a Zinfandel from Harlan Ridge of 2017. Just a half a glass. We're not going to get silly here. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and a project. And tonight's project makes me extremely happy. It is my opening night quilt from... Um, from Free Spirit. It's available as a free download. Look at the beautiful quilt. Look at how it's got black in the setting triangles here and white in the setting triangles there. I mean, come on. Come on. So I'm building a block tonight. Um, it's The block has the peacock fabric in the center. See, all cut on point. Um, and then this is my, my uh, complementary color. So that's what we're building tonight. So... I'm going to say hi to a few more friends, and then we're going to get going with the sewing part, and I have to explain to you what I have in front of you. No, my featherweight did not grow overnight. This is a Singer 301. I'm going to give you the whole rundown in just a sec. Start at bed, Patrick. So let me just say hi to some friends, and then we'll get going with the show. Beth Patrick. <gasps> Hello, Beth Patrick. How are you? I hope uh, you are doing well tonight. Oh, better. Jen is so. <laughs> Jen is sewing, Cindy. Okay, Cindy, where are you? Are you over on Facebook or are you on YouTube or are you on both? Uh, Mary Fit or Mary Fisher, Missy Fisher in Redmond is here. Besides making cat 
beds for the Humane Society Friends Sewing Using Scratch. Very fun. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we have Mel is on. She says, hey, Ray. Cheers from Mississippi. Cheers. We have a Nancy on from sunny Arizona. Hello. Control plus will make your text larger. What would I do without you? Oh, sweet Lord, Lisa, I love you. <laughs> I can see without having to squint. Why didn't my husband just... Oh, it worked over on YouTube too. Yay. Sue Ann Ballard's on too. Hello, Miss Idaho. How are you? All right, I'm Peggy Almendigger. Dinger. Yeah, I think I said that right. Hi, Peggy. Thanks for joining us. And Kathy from Central Illinois. Odie, use a TV monitor. <laughs> That's how I see the screen sometimes. Well, the problem is I don't have my glasses on, and so these contacts are just single vision. I don't have my reader, so I can't, I can't see. Uh, yeah, Mel, we definitely get slowly, for sure. And Jen Jen is drinking her shard. All right, right, right. Been looking at, oh, Mel, opening night is so beautiful. But it is such tiny little piecing. You'll see. And Bridget, yay, Bridget from Rimrock's on. Hi. Oh, uh, <laughs> Cindy says, hey, Jen, we're having a blizzard here. Ten inches of snow overnight hasn't stopped. Yikes, girl, that is so much snow. Hi, Nancy from Lake Stevens. Michelle currently working on Tula Pink Quilt for on, on My Featherweight as well. Well, yay! We're two kindred spirits. Sandy's on from Florida. Oh, Mel has a 301 also. Ooh, Lisa, Linda Wood's watching from her new laptop. Fancy, fancy, fancy. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Edna May before the spa day. Okay. We'll talk for sure. Yes, because I want to get her sewing. So yes, uh, we what? I'm working on block swap for my guild. Nice. Oh, Becky has a 301. I had no idea that she was in such good company from friends from a couple months ago. Haven't sewn on it yet, but looking forward to trying it. <laughs> Sharon Lee says, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Sharon Lee says, Happy Friday. Uh oh. Oh my gosh, you guys, Sandy's out of wine. <laughs> ah! <laughs> 911 emergency. That's not good, girl. That's not good. And Jen Jen's, you look, I know, but my glasses get reflective too. So that's why I like to wear the contacts sometimes. There is a quilt shop in Washington, Indiana that has a huge collection of machines. You need to see it sometime. Sandy McDaniel, I'll just go to Indiana. Madison, Indiana is like my favorite place in indiana to go they have margie's country store i think it's called margie's country store awesome place oh <laughs> sue ann is sewing and she's sipping seven up it's the beverage of choice so ladies let's toast to another week of making it through restaurants are now open again in washington so the family ray and andy and i are going to go out and have dinner someone else is going to cook it someone else is going to clean it and I don't care if I have to wear my mask to and from the table. I am going and acting like a non-savage tonight. I don't even know if I'm going to remember how to act in public. It's been a long time. <laughs> so <laughs> alert the media. Sandy needs veto. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start sewing here and then we're going to chat. So let me tell you about this little machine. So Ray, could you show everybody a pretty picture of large Marge? All right. So this little cutie pie came to me in a lot of machines about two years ago. I don't even have a quarter inch foot for her yet. So you can see I have my painter's tape for my quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and I got two machines, the short and the long bed. The short bed was super um, shiny, like shiny, shiny, shiny. And so I um, found a new home for her almost immediately. And then this one is just sat. Uh, I, I didn't really know what to do with it. And then we, my husband and I came up with the idea of taking a machine and leaving a machine in our second place over in Idaho because I'm, we don't like to travel with a bunch of stuff back and forth. So we have, you know, our 
a second set of everything over there, like a second home. And so I thought this week I was not sleeping one night and I thought, you know what? I'm going to pull out that 301 and see if I could get her not to sound like a freight train. Because good golly, this machine sounded like a freight train earlier this week. It was like nothing I've ever heard before. And so uh, I pulled her out and I got her little manual out because this is one different beast than the featherweight. Apparently I read that the 301 was the precursor to a lot of the uh, 60s and 70s model singers. Um, and so she, she's a high slant shank machine. So finding bits and pieces for her has been a challenge on the quilting level. Um, and I, in fact, I have a piecing foot arriving tomorrow of my favorite style, like the same style we sell for the, um, for the featherweights. I have that one coming. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Lisa, she says very quiet, not quiet yesterday. My husband was like, what do you do? Like he heard it run and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm getting this machine going because I want to take it to Idaho with us for the, for our second, you know, for a resident machine. He goes, he goes, that sounds terrible. You can't take that machine anywhere sounding like that. I'm like, honey, I'm aware. <clears throat> I am well aware that I cannot take her with me sounding like this. So anyway, I oiled and there's lots of actual um, oil and multiple grease ports on this machine and several sets of gears, not just the upper and the lower. So um, yeah, I mean, it worked out okay. And so I was on Instagram a few minutes ago and I was talking about how we had to name her because she doesn't have a name yet. And um, Reagan goes, let's call her Large Marge. <laughs> Do you guys know what that's from? <laughs> from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Large Marge. I'm like, it's perfect because she looks like she ate two featherweights. She's such a big girl. So there you go. <laughs> Ray will remind you how to act. She will. Rem oh, did you love that comment? <laughs> Yay, Clackamas County is beautiful, Odie. Wow, mine is quiet. I guess I got lucky. Yes, you did because mine was... It was, sh it was shrill, like the sound coming out of it was shrill. It was awful. Uh, I got my, I also got it at your recommendation, so happy with mine. Well, so far I'm, I'm thrilled now that she doesn't sound like she's gonna, it sounded like her motor was burning up, but it was just some, the, uh, there's some gears back here, folks, that are like a weird spiral gears thing, uh, and I, lubricated the snot out of that thing with grease and it um sounds a lot better okay i'm gonna go over to my ironing station because i have to oops iron some half square triangles here let me do that <clears throat> ironing station so i'm just gonna press these open and i have to trim them down Oh, let's get this right, darling. So in addition to this 301, I also have a 201 in my collection. The 201 is another just workhorse machine. All these old singers, I feel like they all are. Um, it lives in a cabinet, though. 201s can sit on the table, but they're meant... They were designed to either live in a box or live in a cabinet. This 301 can also go into a cabinet, but it was also designed to sit tabletop. Ooh, goodness, sorry about that, guys. Just me. Okay, I'm oh, not gonna get that right, so. Oh, okay, I'll just come back here, there. All right, I'll do this. I have to trim these up, you know, to one and a half inch <laughs> half square triangle. Oh, Sarah, you have, Sarah's on from So Much Charm, guys. She's a buddy of mine in Houston that does a subscription-based service. She
she has a 201 also. And Bonnie says, are the 301s manufactured a lot heavy? Oh, yes. Trust me, there's no um, mistaking that you are dealing with a, a 301 versus a featherweight. Uh, they are all steel. All steel. Um, it feels like a boat anchor. Not like a bad boat anchor, but like a boat anchor. Becky likes your ring on the right hand. Oh, this one? Thank you. It was a gift from my sweet husband recently. We are having our 25th wedding anniversary over So Expo in a few weeks. And uh, there's no going anywhere. We want to stay safe and healthy. So he bought me a nice little present to wear on my right hand. Isn't that kind of him? He's a good guy. I'm going to keep him. Odie says, I have a 1910 model 66 red eye. Her name is Ginger. Ginger. Cute. And my 1951 221. Very nice. I do have a treadle upstairs, too. I think she's a 1918. And she's the one with the Sphinx cat on it. Um, and she sews really well. My son used to be able to get her really cranked up when he lived with us. Just, um, I have a little trouble with the rhythm of the treadle. Odie says, is that the ring you picked out? It is the ring I picked out. <laughs> See, it's a pretty little uh, band. You know, for 25 years, I figured an anniversary band was appropriate. Melanie says, I got one of those big suction handles for my rulers to prevent me from chopping my fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? I'm up, I'm up. Mel, are you trying to say that I cut myself? Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm missing a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Oh, hi, Kim Warren. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. Yep, your right hand, Darlene. Good job. I have a 301. It was a mess and now it purrs like a kitten. Very nice, Sue Ann. Very, very, very nice. I made sure I had lots of bobbins tonight. So this little, uh, uh. Darlene, form of that. My 301 large Marge is not going to let me down here. Okay. I'm going to start with my uh, <clears throat> flying geese blocks here. Ray stepped out. Let me switch the cameras. All right. There we go. So I've been working on my set this week for Expo. Do you guys like the changes I made? I uh, was trying to, I was going to move a quilt to the back wall and shoot from straight back versus the side of the room, which you guys will see on my studio tour on Monday. And, uh, <clears throat> and Reagan's like, why don't you hang our sign up, Mom? We would, if we were at a show, you'd have your sign at the show. I'm like, okay, smarty pants. Okay, smarty pants. What? No, yes, Mel. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I haven't cut myself this week. I don't have any band-aids on my fingers. <laughs> Becky. Oh, Sarah, do you know Angel? You guys are both in Houston. Do you know each other? That's funny. Becky says, what a sweetie. My 40th was last summer. We didn't go anywhere either, but that's okay because I ended up with oh, her toot 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 named Ruby Darlene. <laughs> I was so flattered. <laughs> Sunny says, do you collect or covet other things besides sewing machines? Um, so I do have an affinity for vintage things. And when we do the studio, I'm going to do a studio tour with you guys uh, for my Monday show next week. And it's going to be, um, we're going to, I'm going to show you my other collection. I, there's, I'm going to leave it a surprise. I do collect one other type of, of antique thing 
it actually is sewing related also. So, but I'll show you guys next week my collection. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Kelly M. Did you, your light bulb went out. Did you get it? Uh, Reagan and I had a miscommunication. That was my fault, not hers. So, but it went out a few days ago. So you should have it in Sisters Oregon. Beautiful. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Sue Ann. <laughs> oh, your 301 sits on your shirt. Nice. Yes, we are. This is, oh, Angel and you are buddies. That's good to know. Uh, Sarah, she is hilarious. I Angel is one of my funny gals that I have on my show. I love her. <laughs> you probably just jinxed yourself. I know, right? No more cutting tonight. I don't have any more cutting. I think the 201, I heard it from my brother. Jen Jen says from my brother's mother-in-law is, is bad. I hope I can salvage. Usually you can't. Oh, you're... <laughs> yes, you keep it to yourself, Kelly. We're not telling everybody else what I collect. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> it hangs out in my nest of 221s. You guys are cracking me up. That's fun. Oh, my 30th anniversary this year. Need suggestions from the tribe. Joe's not watching tonight, so it's okay to shoot the moon. Well, didn't you just get a motor home? <laughs> Can't you call that your present, Mel? <laughs> Maybe you need a puppy. Do you like puppies? Puppies would be fun. <laughs> you guys are funny. I want a puppy, but we're not having puppies. Rogi is enough of a handful at seven. We are absolutely not allowing him to be a bad influence on another generation. He really is. Oh, Ray, I need to go up. Sorry, now that you're back, can you go? Yeah, now you're down again because you're sewing. Oh, did you have it back up? Yep. Oh, okay, I thought I was talking to myself. Okay. It's 65. Kelly M., don't tell everybody my secret. We're talking about it on Monday. So Kelly is alluding to the fact that the other thing I collect, there is a game that I play with it. I'm only allowed to purchase them if there's some criteria for my friend Sandy who lives in Florida. So <laughs> it's not 64 or 69. $65 is the... <laughs> Oh, Mel says, we already have a puppy. Okay, so puppies are off the list, guys. What does Mel want from her hubby Joe for their anniversary, their 30th anniversary? Diamonds are nice. I would say, I like diamonds. <laughs> diamonds are a girl's best friend, right? The funny thing is, for people who really know me, I'm not really a very blingy person. I'm really not. Not showy, not blingy. But diamonds are always a good bet. <laughs> we can do five. <laughs> if you can do five, then you can do two. 6350. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Mel, jewelry. See, bats on the jewelry bandwagon, Mel. Sandy, we're heading. <laughs> oh, you're headed to Florida first, Mel? Nice. Oh, Jen Jen, lo I love diamonds too. <laughs> My husband says that had he known... Okay, so he watches this show called Adam Ruins Everything. I think it's on like True TV or something, which is one of the cable stations here. And in it, this guy named Adam dispels all of the myths of of the day so like getting a diamond engagement ring um is a tradition that was started in the 20s by De Beers which is a diamond um import export company so they could sell more diamonds but before the 20s um an engagement ring had nothing to do with a diamond so my husband watched the show I don't remember when we watched it a few years ago and he was like so if I would have known that diamonds were started as a publicity stunt for a diamond manufacturer to sell more diamonds, I would have bought you something else when we got engaged. And I'm like, Adam really does ruin everything. <laughs> Hi, D. Hartman. Oh, she's doing quilt binding today. Very cool. And Faye's on. Hi, sweetheart. I'm coming back to see you in a few weeks. Um, if you're interested, by the way, who's ever on that's in uh, Central to Arizona, 
Um, oh, Quilting Oasis in Mesa, Arizona's teacher meet and greet is on tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Arizona time. And uh, they, uh, they will, my classes, if you are at all interested in my classes, I got you, babe. Um, they're going to fill up. So be on, ready to get on and get into the classes, just so you know. We're doing a featherweight class, beginning machine quilting, and a quilt as you go. It, you don't need to read the whole thing. She just said... Hi, she, Wendy Lewis. She would love to quilt. Is this a good machine for that application? And where do I start looking for a reasonably priced featherweight? Oh, so um, Wendy... And we have a new puppy to go with us on this adventure. Very fun. Um, so Wendy... The, hold on. Pug Puppy Sewing Studio. Say it loud. Joe's listening. <laughs> okay. So... Um, Good, like, so you're going to be sewing curtains and home decor, would also like to quilt. This is a good, so the featherweight will do home decor and stuff. If you really want to do like velvet and like heavy stuff, I would probably encourage you more onto the 201 or the 301, um, just because they're more powerhouse machines. The featherweight was considered a light industrial machine though, back in its in its heyday so you could have a featherweight and of course the portability and compactness of the featherweight for traveling is you know un unsurpassed because trust me this is a boat anchor this thing will take up an entire cabinet and you'll need to lift weights to pick it up wow and you're a a very adventurous lady to bring a new puppy with you <laughs> first up ohio to arizona nice send SN <laughs> send pictures of your diamond. <laughs> uh, mostly lightweight and cotton. So the featherweight would be a perfect place uh, for that. You can have, um, you can look on the Facebook Marketplace and eBay, but purchasing from like a non like dealership like myself just means that you're there's some risk involved. Sometimes people find them like in storage units and they just throw them up. And I, there's been several of my friends that have got really good deals on machines, but they land up having to send them back or get their money back because the machines aren't working when they arrive. So Wendy, this is a conversation you and I can take offline because there's probably some important questions that you need to ask and it needs to have some particular accessories like it's bobbin casing and such, which will cost you an arm and a leg to replace if it doesn't come with it. So you and I can talk offline to make sure you get the right machine. All right. Oh, hello, JoLynn Nilsson from Cold, Minnesota. Welcome. By the way, interrupt us. You'll be so proud of my mechanical work. I swapped a motor. Be quiet from the 201 uh, to the 222 electrical bobbin, full assembly breakdown cleanup. Uh, psh, girl, you're hired. That's fabulous. Good job. <laughs> No, I am not a risk. <laughs> if you if you purchase a machine for me, it comes with a warranty. <laughs> oh, thanks, babe. Odie Kimmel said, have you considered filming a class mm. and then charge to watch it? So, Miss Odie, we are in the process of putting a maintenance class, a Zoom class on the books for another, for probably uh, March or April. So there'll be some stuff out on that soon because I'm going to have everything ready to go to advertise at Expo in a few weeks. So be on the lookout for that. I will keep hearing that there will snow next week. Oh, snow in Mississippi. What? That's not good. Oh, hello, darling. So because I can't, couldn't join the live tomorrow in Arizona, something about them having a business account and mine being a business account, I recorded a little commercial, which was kind of fun. Um, I'm used to being live with you guys, so to like do a full commercial, that was kind of funny for the classes. I'm going to be there March, I think it's 20, March, April. Oh, Rogue wants to say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Mwah. <laughs> He's like, ew, stop it, Mom. No kisses on, on no, he television. He wasn't even on the camera. Oh, darn, we mi you missed Rogue.
All right. Yes, the Zoom classes are going to be new, Odie. We, um, there's just, I was hesitant about doing them um, because of the fact that really I just am, it's really just a me thing. I'm just so much more comfortable in person with people. But the fact is, is this COVID thing is not going away anytime in the near future. And I know that there are people that are really wanting classes and education right now because let's face it we're all kind of stuck at home and we've got nothing but time on our hands and so I'm gonna I'm gonna lean in and I'm gonna get over myself and we are going to do a at least one we might even do them monthly if I have enough interest um some zoom classes like more formal classes not like the mini classes I've been offering you know here on this page and during these live events and stuff so pretty excited. We're also going to do a machine quilting class, um, which is going to be a two-parter, um, which is a class I've been teaching for about 15 years. You can, you can do it on your featherweight. You can do it on your modern machine. There isn't going to be a, um, a criteria about that. And then, and we are also going to do, um, <clears throat> uh, if there's interest to do a quilt as you go, class which is similar to that Arizona sky that we did last year so these will be paid like events and they'll be uh you know you'll be getting supply lists and such so uh be on the lookout for that information Melanie Mitchell said you have a gift for connecting virtually please do lean in and Beth Patrick said I agree with Melanie Mitchell oh you guys are so sweet It's something I've had to definitely get better at. <clears throat> you guys are talking about cold fronts all over the country. I hope we're not getting any here. <laughs> Mel, when do you head out on your RV trip? Is that, did you say next week? Be careful. I don't want you to get stuck. I need to put one of my little uh, cutters on here. Okay. Angel said you are awesome. Yes, you are good at it. <laughs> see Kelly M's and Faye's thing on YouTube? No. Did it not? Is it not scroll? Faye says, what dates will you be here? Um. In Arizona. Oh, Faye. So, I think it's the week of the March 28th, I think is the Monday. I don't have a calendar in front of me. And it's through the Friday, April 2nd. I'll be there all week. They're, they're going to be so sick of me. <laughs> Look out, Kenny, Kathy Reynolds. Here I come. Um, Kelly M. says, you'd be so proud of my mechanical work. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And then she said again, so tell us more about the Zoom, the machine quilting. So, actually, Kelly has been asking about this for a long time because she's kind of sequestered to being home in sisters and her and I originally had connected because I was offering some classes locally up here um, but I just think in this season where it's not really for people who are in a sensitive age demographic or have sensitive health concerns being out in public isn't really smart for them and so I, I decided to do to offer a zoom course it's going to, I'm going to limit the first one to 10 just to see if I can handle um, that. And, and if we get good feedback from that, we're going to do more of them regularly, like maybe even once a month. Um, and these are just going to be basic 
maintenance workshops, how to clean your machine, take care of your machine, how to oil and lubricate properly, safe, you know, safe chemicals. We're going to, I'm going to demonstrate how to change the belt, change the light bulb, change the, um, the, uh, drip pan liner just basic stuff that we would do during like an annual service here in our shop so that way you guys can kind of get over that stigmatism of working with screwdrivers and being comfortable working on these little machines the the singer featherweight was created and designed by engineers so that the end user which is you and i um, can work on them ourselves and so they're very simple little creatures and i think they just kind of intimidate people because they think that they're not as simple as they appear to be um, and so this class is kind of all about getting you over that stigmatism and having you pull it apart to a certain degree and then put it back together so should be fun all right now well as soon as i go as soon as i schedule the class in probably early March because it's going to be after Expo which is that last weekend in March the 24th through the 28th so probably that next week or the week after we're going to have it so it'll be a it'll be a 10 person maximum there will be a kit purchase for those of you that haven't purchased the kit from me before obviously if you've purchased a machine or a kit I'm not going to make you buy another one um, and then so there has to be enough shipping time in order to get the stuff to you for the class we're just going to roll with it because if I'm doing this for Expo, I don't know why I, would, why I wouldn't offer it to my own my own community. So quilting too, I heard. Yeah, so tell us more about the Zoom. Oh, the uh, Zoom machine quilting. So um, I offer have offered for the last 15 years a two-part, a two-session machine quilting class. It's all about um, confidence and starting and stopping lines of quilting, how to calibrate the vintage machines to create the right size stitch length. Um, it goes from just regular straight quilting to an introduction on free motion for over the two sessions. They're two four hour sessions. We'll probably cut it down for online because there's like a lunch built in there and stuff. So depending on when I have them. Um, so it's gonna be one price for, for two sessions, Zoom sessions with the machine quilting and then there'll be an intermediate class available if for those who have taken a season to gain confidence in just regular basic machine quilting in order to go into the next level more of like an intermediate machine quilting class. Our, oh, <laughs> thanks Lisa, put my calendar. If you're on Facebook, Lisa Meadows put my dates on the, on the feed. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm taking care of Debbie. Okay, and Deb, I'll put it. And Deb Sinclair, Ray's taking care of you. I think they all should, I guess. <laughs> all right. Quilting to, I heard, I thought I heard. Yes, so the machine quilting, there'll be the two different classes. A beginning two-part and then the intermediate is just a one-part class. Kelly, so that is the plan. All right, I'm going to go over here to my ironing station. <clears throat> Press these open. I, uh, I needed some Idaho time this weekend, but it did not happen. We just... I find that if I'm away from home, I will rest and relax. And when I am home, I will find ways to fill my time. So i um, kind of bummed it didn't work out for us to go. But um, I think we're gonna, probably going to be there in the next week or so for a, for a couple days before Expo just to let me um, do some, some planning and some scheduling of content and all that fun stuff. Um, a lot of what I do with you guys on a week to deep, week to week basis is very intentional and very planned out and I'm a very scheduled person and so I need I need my creative time of not no interruptions and such to be able to plan out what we all are going to learn and talk about so all right let's see go back over here So Kelly, I don't have dates yet for those classes. 
Um, the, the online, the virtual classes with me, I know they're going to be early to mid March. Um, if you guys have suggestions of like whether midweek is better for you or weekend, we might do like a midweek session and then we maybe do a weekend session for those of you who are still full time Monday through Friday. Um, I can be flexible because this is, this is my job. So if I, um, I can do, <clears throat> I can definitely do some weekend stuff if I, if I need to, for those of you who still have Monday through Friday, you know, jobs. They will be, and the dates for those will be announced here first. I had an interesting conversation this week with a colleague. Um, she's not at all in featherweight, um, the featherweight business, but she is actually a, um, worked for a company that installed my automated quilting machine behind me like 15 years ago. Her and I have been colleagues for a long time. Um, she's been a very nice lady and her and I were just catching up a little bit this week and she was asked, she was obviously has seen some of the stuff I've been doing online and she's like, wow, you really, you know, come into your own with the online stuff and, you know, she was just complimenting me on on all of the content and, and all of that. And I, and she said that she's talked to a bunch of people in our industry, um, the sewing and quilting industry at large, not, not so much the featherweights per se, but she said that the ones who have done the pivot and have embraced this online virtual type thing, um, <clears throat> they're, they're doing really well. And the businesses that haven't, are not making it so I'm so glad that this is you know you guys are watching and okay I see the Pam Ernest Pam Ernest I'll be right with you uh, so I'm glad you guys are watching and enjoying what, what we're what we're talking about and hanging out it makes me feel good because it would be really bad to just be out here talking to myself <laughs> my white feather may, yes so Pam says her white feather weight does not have a drip pan is it supposed to no ma'am it is not so it doesn't have a a liner, it should have like a particle board bottom pan, but because the white featherweight doesn't have gears and therefore doesn't have grease to go on the gears and drippings, there isn't a liner needed to absorb anything because that's what that particle board, the little bit of uh, drips that you could get from the, um, from the oil that would go on the oil sp spots is not enough to require a drip pan. So you're... Oh, did you just walk in front of the camera? That says, cute hair, Ray. Oh, everybody says hi. <laughs> Pam, I hope that answered your questions. The white featherweight is a little different creature than her um, black and tan counterparts. <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> You guys, I told her not to cut the bangs. She didn't listen to me. Now she does this. I like the bangs. She said, curtain bangs are in, Mom. I remember the 80s where we had the, you know, the bangs straight down and then the bangs straight up. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> you don't need to worry about me putting cutting bangs. It's not happening. Hi, Lisa from Connecticut. <sighs> So it's really, yeah, so it's really, the drip pans are really to catch the drippings from the grease. And there is some oil dripping too, but it's not enough to require the liner, Pam. A flock of, sea yes, flock of seagulls hair, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I was looking ahead at the calendar, guys, and we are having a Wednesday night live on St. Patrick's Day in March. So I feel I'm feeling the need to give some stuff away. So we are going to do a show me your green contest that night. You guys are going to dress up in your green. You're going to snap a picture of yourself and send it in for the show. And then I'm going to pick a winner. Green is my favorite color too. So I'm just saying I've got a lot of green. 
Uh, we're going to have, <laughs> it's okay, Kelly. I couldn't read seagulls anyway. <laughs> My eyes. <laughs> So we are St. Patrick's Day. Wear your green contest. Oopsie. Hi, buddy. You want to say hi to everybody? Come on, up. Up. Good buddy. Can you say hi to the ladies? Say hi. Guess what he thinks it's time for. I'm not even going to say it out loud. <laughs> Deanne Hartman, I knew I liked you. She said green is my favorite, too. I joke that they would never let me judge a quilt show because I would literally give all of the blue ribbons to the green quilts. Just if they're green, I'd give them ribbon. It didn't even matter if they were like technically right, if their points matched. I don't care. Love green. Irish whiskey giveaway. <laughs> what? I'm not giving whiskey away. I'm keeping the whiskey. <laughs> Never say oops in an operating room. <laughs> you guys stop. Nope. Stop. D-I-N-N-E-R. Stop with that talk. <laughs> Jen Jen says you're a handsome rogue. <laughs> Debbie, it's your birthday on St. Patrick's Day. Nice. All right. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I used to have this shirt that said, kiss me, I'm Irish but I'm not really Irish, but it was a really pretty color green. So I would wear it on St. Patrick's Day. Oopsie. Oopsie, did I forget to do, sorry. Forgot to iron one. Okay, I forgot one. Can't forget one. <sighs> <laughs> Give the empty bottle away. What fun would that be, <laughs> Deanne? <laughs> I did find out, so you guys will think this is funny. Uh, my mom, who I think is on here, was French-Canadian. And she, her family hailed out of Quebec. And so um, my, my sister, and oh, I think I told you guys this already. So we're predominantly English-Irish. In, in the 23andMe uh, genetics test, not French, English, Irish. So technically, <laughs> everyone send her a green mask. <laughs> Girl, you don't think I have green masks? That's the only color I have. I, oh, Jen Chen says, I'm Irish. <laughs> oh my gosh, Charlene, I like my machine quilting on the 221 rather than the white. Yeah, I am... Um, I'm in your camp, Sue Ann. I do really prefer sewing on my the black or the tan 221 versus the little white one. It just, it's so fast. I mean, I do like a fast machine, but it's it's almost too fast. Uh, it's because they're fast. She said any reason why. And they don't have that nice metallic-y sound to them because it's a belt-driven assembly in the little white ones. I think it's the noise. It doesn't sound the same to me. <laughs> my daughter was born uh, on St. Patrick's Day in 40 coming up oh I celebrated one time that's awesome Kathy very cool yeah uh, no mom they wouldn't spank you they would pinch you <laughs> what parties do you go to <laughs> that's that's not the same kind of party All right. Rogue gave up. He crashed on the floor over here. Okay. Not time yet. Uh -oh. 
You mean white lighting? A oh, white lightning. Joe is switching to his first machine because she's too fast. I totally would believe it. My white machine's name is Opal. Because I heard of a lot of people calling their white machines Pearl, and I was trying to be a little different. Are you passing me a note? I'm passing you a note in class. Oh, okay. Reagan's passing me a note. Oh, she said you look pretty, Ray. <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. Oh, gosh. Okay. Now for the half square or for the flying geese blocks here. White bean. Yes, Mel, that's your little machine's name. Yes, I did. So this week um, starts my practice sessions with the <clears throat> my practice sessions with the expo people. I have to tell you guys, I am so impressed with um, this the whole organization of this virtual show. They are, they have their stuff together. Um, they are making the speakers and teachers and vendors take practice uh, sessions on the Zoom platform. Isn't that a fabulous idea? Uh, that, as opposed to putting someone up that doesn't quite know what they're doing. Um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the website yet, it's um, www.soexpo.com. Don't spell that wrong um, or typo it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my training sessions start this week. Uh, I'm not that comfortable on Zoom because this, we use actual like broadcasting software and a switcher and stuff. Um, so it's a totally different setup, digitally speaking. Uh, but I'm like totally game to try something new. And we are required to join sessions this week to, to practice. So hopefully it'll be, it'll come off. Um, okay, Mel. Yes, that's what I meant. But we don't need to, we don't need to go there. Um, and white bean and rice. We look at mess it. <laughs> uh, Faye, I'm excited to see you guys and take your classes. Yay, Faye. I'm super excited to see everybody. Um, are you gonna, Faye, are you gonna sign up for the machine quilting one this time around because you're retired now? I think you're, you were just getting ready to retire. So Ray and I are going to spend the weekend not the entire weekend, don't worry. Cleaning up the, the world headquarters of Featherweight Doctor. Oh, I thought you it's say, my garage. I thought you were going to say binging Twilight. Yeah, we are going to watch the Twilight series this weekend, too. <laughs> we watched... She is so funny because she was really young when that series first came out. And so she didn't have any interest. I didn't really want her watching it. <gasps> Lois! Hello! Hello, hello! Lois, I was mistaken. The studio tour is Monday, not today. Sorry, Monday. Oh, wait a second. The studio tour is Monday. Hmm, that works out well. Oh, good. Yay, 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 Faye. Um, I was mistaken. We're, it's the sip and sew tonight. I had my dates wrong when I talked to you this week, Lois. Sorry. I would have been 13. I was 13 when the first Twilight came out. Oh, so Ray was only 13 when the first Twilight movie came out. So she couldn't, I didn't have her watch it. Um, obviously, she had no interest and it really wasn't age appropriate. 
But she... Uh, yes, I was. It's PG-13. Well, you? perfect. Okay. okay. Okay, woman. Sassy. I just didn't want to watch it. Yes, so she didn't... <laughs> yes. Oh, love me some Twilight, Jen Jen says. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and so we... So she watched the first movie last night. We watched it together. And you know how bad it is? You know, it's really bad production quality. And she's like, how do you even get into this? And I'm like, trust me, the later movies get better because their production quality goes up. But it's super cheesy. So she's like, Mom, this is pretty cheesy. I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? What's he doing back there? I don't know. Okay. They're going to kick me off in two minutes. So let me wrap things up. So my, oh, I'm going to run, oh, myself a Zoom birthday. Nice, 75th. That's great, high school. That's awesome. That's what we did on my birthday this year, too. Andy put together a little conference call with a bunch of friends. But His idea, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Reagan's idea? No, no. It was Dad's idea. I put it together. Oh, sorry for the question. And they also got me a princess tort, which is my favorite kind of cake. Yay. Aww. <laughs> Mel, she's so sweet. All right, guys. So I'm going to jump out of here. It's uh, We're going to go find some food in a restaurant prepared by other people. First time in four months. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. On Monday will be the studio tour. I'm going to show you guys my favorite, how I organize my cutting station and my sewing stations. And I'm going to show you... Um, the world headquarters for Featherweight Doctor, my garage. Everybody needs to lower their expectations. <laughs> and some of my favorite things, I have a new chair coming. We're going to talk about my new chair. And it's going to be a fun time. So join me on Monday, 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. And then about 10 minutes before on Instagram for a pre-show. And we'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. Mwah.